Hi, and welcome to A View from the Bed. This is a CHI St. Vincent podcast where we talk to real patients about their healthcare perspective. We know that your healthcare journey can be scary, so that's why we want to get their view on the good, the bad, and the ugly from diagnosis to recovery. Enjoy today's episode. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. Um, we're super excited uh, to be talking uh, to this month's patient about what she experienced. So we're not going to waste time. We're going to jump right in. So welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks. Well, I will tell you, when your story came to us, <laughs> we had to talk to you because it's kind of a crazy story. Yeah, it, it really is. So do you just want to start at the beginning? Sure. Um, well, the beginning is, I guess, um, uh, I do uh, mission trips to the Amazon River. Oh, wow. And I was scheduled to go on one uh, with a church out of Bentonville uh, in March of last year. In February, I found out I was really anemic, severely anemic. Oh, yeah. And uh, I went on to the trip, and when I got back, we uh, were doing, you know, figuring out what was wrong, and I mm -hmm. found out I had stage 4 colon cancer. Oh, my goodness. So yeah. how how did you find that out? Because I was anemic. They did a colonoscopy. Okay. And uh, found the tumor. Okay. And then a uh, PET scan showed a spot on my liver, and then I also had lymph node involvement. Oh, my so, um so yeah, well, things went pretty quickly after that. I had surgery on in May, and in June I started chemotherapy. So um, I uh, in October I went back to um, the Amazon, and I before I went back I had a slight infection in my toe. Um, I finished the antibiotics on the river, mm -hmm. and uh, when I and I was fine, you know everything was okay. But when I got back, I could tell that there was something. My foot was hurting. Was okay. something wrong? I went to the doctor on a Thursday. And started more antibiotics, uh, but by Saturday I was in so much pain I couldn't walk. Oh my goodness! So I came to the ER, mm -hmm. and um, I had a severe infection because chemo had compromised my immune system. Oh, okay. And uh, I couldn't fight three common bacteria, yeah. and so um, I was in the hospital. They were uh, really trying to uh, treat it with some pretty strong antibiotics, mm -hmm. but the infection was just. Uh, it was it was raging. It, oh, wow. it was just that I, I knew I knew Dr. Doc, Dr. Thappa was my infectious control dog, and okay. she's fabulous, by yeah. the way. Um, and I remember looking at her one time and saying, um, "I know you're keeping me alive." And she says, "Well, yes, we are." <laughs> you know? oh. And uh, and uh, but I knew what was, I knew what was going to be happening. And so um, on a Wednesday, October twenty fifth. I had surgery to amputate the fifth toe on my foot and oh, wow. to surgically clean the infection from my foot, which okay. there was quite a bit. Yeah. And there was always the option of, we may have to take more of your foot. Oh, wow. And so I was left with um, an open wound okay. and uh, many more questions than I had answers, honestly. I bet. And so I did a, a six weeks at home where I um, did a antibiotic, a IV antibiotic through my port. Okay. I gave myself the, the, the medicine. Okay. And uh, it was after that six weeks when I was finished with all that, that I was referred to the wound care clinic there at Hot Springs. Okay. And um, that's when, when they got involved is when uh, the healing really took oh, off. An awesome diabetic. So there's, there was that complicating there is factor. that complication, yes. So um, going to the wound care clinic uh, uh, was really where the, the, that was the game changer. So tell us a little bit, describe a little bit when you noticed there was something on your toe. Mm-hmm. What did it look like? Well, it wasn't really, I didn't notice it on my toe. It was like okay. on the bottom. It felt like uh, a planter's wart. Okay. Is what it okay. felt like. Yeah. But it was, um, it was um, oozing. Oh. And so that's when I knew something was wrong. But yeah. then uh, when I went to the doctor on that Thursday, they debreeded it and wrapped it. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Saturday, I sent my, my friend as my PA, I sent her a text and said, hey, can I unwrap this while I'm just kind of sitting around? She said, yes. And then when I did, that's when I saw my, my toe was gray and it was oh. really red around it. Yeah. And I knew it was, um, I knew it was infected. I mean, yeah. you know, even worse. It was the antibiotics just weren't, weren't, weren't oh, touching wow. it. So that's whenever I came to the ER. That's probably a really good call because, you know, you hear these stories mm -hmm. of people that have had sores or wounds on mm -hmm. their feet mm -hmm. and they don't get it checked. And, right. and like, a dog chews it all, or, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. or things like that because yeah. they know that it's infected and rotten uh -huh. and it saves their life. Uh -huh. so I'm really uh -huh. glad you watched it and paid attention. Yes, to yes. That. Now, do they think that 
do they know how it started or why it started? No, or? not really. Um, it, it was started before I went to Brazil because I finished okay. up my um, antibiotics while I was on the river. Okay. Um, but, you know, just maybe a I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't really know how it started. It just, well, as I said, it felt like a planner's word. It's what it looked like too. Okay. Um, but um, when, then that, when they debrided it, it, it really showed that how infected it was. Well, and you know, you mentioned something too, that's really important is when you're a diabetic, you really have to pay attention to your legs and feet. Yes, absolutely. Because sometimes you don't always feel things. Right. Especially if you have neuropathy, which I do, which also is worse with the chemotherapy. Chemo oh, causes okay. more neuropathy. So I always check it. And that's yeah. whenever I, I could tell that this is, this is something yeah. that needs to be attended to. Yeah. You and, know, you mentioned when you started going to the One Care Clinic in Hot Springs, mm -hmm. and that really was the game changer. Absolutely. So what were some of the things that they did that made a difference? Well, you know, they have... Um, uh, all sorts of the knowledge that they have in terms of healing and, and, and wound care. Um, they changed uh, the uh, medicine that I was using okay. and um, that I could tell pretty quickly, I could tell that was making it heal a little bit faster. Oh, of course, they debrided a lot of it. And, yeah. and um, then um, when they were, we changed to the, um, uh, the collagen treatment with the ergotol silver on top, that that's when it really took off. The oh, healing wow. was just, and I was amazed. Mm -hmm. And honestly, um, they, uh, you know, they were having to make sure my blood sugar stayed as well as down as it oh. could, you know, even with everything else, um, that is, that was important. You okay. know, whenever you're diabetic, whenever you're having to heal a wound, you yeah. have to keep your blood sugar under some sort of control. Yeah. And, um, so, and they were just very encouraging of that, but, you know, just their knowledge of, of all the different medicines and different combinations that they can do to promote healing yeah. uh, in a, you know, foot or whatever. Um, that was, that was the game changer. That's amazing. Yes. How often did you go? I went every week for uh, a couple of months, I guess. Okay. And then um, whenever I was able to go every other week, I thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it was, uh, it was come back in a month. Okay. And then uh, last time I saw them, it's like, we'll see you in four months. I'm basically released from that. Oh, they just want to keep me as a patient since I am diabetic. Yeah. In case I needed it, sure. I'm already there. So that four month follow up really isn't for my foot. It's just to kind of keep me in the system. Yeah. So, uh, but they're like, yeah, you can do all activities as tolerated. You can take a bath. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can take a bath. That's I had to right. really take a bath for six months. I mean, I showered. Oh, I, yes. I wasn't going around snake. <laughs> not a submerged. But not. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it was, it was, um, they're just very encouraging. Uh, and, and every one of them I saw, you know, um, Dr. Hollenbeck and I saw Hillary, the ARMP mm -hmm. and all the nurses that I saw, every one of them had a level of professionalism that was just, uh, unparalleled oh, it's and, uh, and, and not just in their knowledge, but in also their, their, uh, interaction with me, yeah. um, answered all questions, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it, they were just, it was just really, really a great experience going there. That's wonderful. So how long have you been a diabetic? Since 2013 is when I found out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you a type? Type two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, it's well under control? Well, it was until I had to start chemo. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> chemo and steroids uh, make your uh, blood sugar go up. So yeah. it was really under control before then. But then, so you had the, had the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the chemo and stuff, I had to be off of that for four months oh. because that definitely would have interfered with the, with the healing of the wound. Sure. And, uh, so it was one of those, uh, Dr. Balt said, you know, we start chemo too early. We risk losing your foot. We start it too late. We risk losing your life. He said, you're really yeah. complicated. Yeah. Uh, but the good news is, uh, the, the cancer is well, I mean, it's pretty much gone. So um, we were able to, my tumor markers were staying low. So okay. we were able to stay off of chemo for, for those four months. Oh, nice. Okay. That my foot was healing. And now my foot is healed and just doing great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned it was the fifth toe mm -hmm. on your foot. Yes. So when you started walking and things again, did you notice? I, I mean, I can different? a little bit. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't have any balance issues or anything okay. like that. Um, I have now uh, an orthotic insert. That has, I call it my bumper toe. Okay. It's got this little piece of foam uh -huh. where my toe should be just yeah. to keep the other four from, okay. from trying, trying to compensate, okay. which would make things worse in the foot. Yeah. Um, but in terms of walk, I was able to walk um, 
course, I used a walker at first, and yeah. then I then I went to a cane. Okay, and then I was able to walk by myself. Um, and, um, I didn't really have any trouble, oh, um, balance or anything like that. Uh, I didn't have any physical therapy. Well, I had a physical therapy therapist came during my uh, home health, okay. but he was like, you don't need me. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, just keeping some strength going in my leg, but yeah. I was walking just fine. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, sometimes you hear when people have to have a toe amputated, especially if it's the great toe, that's, yeah. that's the one it's that like, they're like, Oh, that's kind of your mm -hmm. balance. Yeah. Keeper. Yeah. And, um, but you know, you don't realize how much you, you use your toes. No, I know. I, and, and what's also very weird is, uh, the phantom sensations. Oh, and, uh, yeah. I noticed, uh, not just the phantom pain, which uh -huh. that, you know, sometimes it's like my little toe feels like I just hit it on a piece of furniture and I'm yeah. looking at my foot going, you're not there. <laughs> Why am I hurting? Yeah. And, but, uh, the phantom sensations, like I noticed, um, uh, I was, I'm, all, I'm on the board of directors at Turpentide Creek up in the oh, Rica yeah. Springs. And I was up there and helping, uh, do some, some hanging some signs or something on the, on the, the habitats. And when I was on uneven ground, yeah. my, it's like my, I could sense that little toe trying to reach oh, totally. and, and kind of grab uh -huh. for balance. And it wasn't there, but yeah. I could, I could feel it yeah, trying to do that. It was the weirdest thing, but that's when I realized that, you know, that's probably one place where balance, uh, I'm going to have to get used to that is on uneven ground and stuff oh, yeah. like that. So, um, yeah. so that's what I think this orthotic is going to help with as well. Well, that's so cool that they yeah. have an orthotic cause you don't realize how you're, and, and this is true of your hands too, right. for those that don't know that, but if you lose a finger, your other fingers will curve to uh -huh. compensate. Yes. And um, that could then cause more damage in the yes. foot than what, what, you know, just having a toe amputated, it can, yes. you know, so that just kind of keeps everything aligned. I, isn't that crazy? Yeah. How the body. It is. Does that. It how is. God created our bodies to just compensate. Yes. So. Yes. Um, and again, you don't realize the gripping uh -huh. that you don't you don't think about no you know, you, you, yeah or... you forget we're primates until something know. like that happens you know, know. even when you wear different shoes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's like if you wear sandals or flip-flops uh -huh. uh -huh. you know things like that you don't realize how much your toes right make a difference exactly exactly how that... did you deal with it emotionally i mean you know you just learned <laughs> you had cancer it it was a uh, well you know the, since t since february of 2021 things have been kind of an emotional roller coaster i lost my husband to covid oh, in 2021 so oh, things wow. have just been kind of a yeah. emotionally kind of a uh uh odd place anyway yeah. um so yeah finding out i had cancer and then this in in some ways it was like well it's just one more thing you know yeah. one more thing to deal with mm -hmm. and just take it day by day they just kind of compile sometimes yes, don't they yes they do and, uh, you know, just, uh, just a lot of prayer, yeah. uh, a lot of, um, a lot of counsel talking with, uh, with, with trusted people that, that, um, some who had been, you know, been there with chemo and stuff, nobody that I knew had been there with chemo and then, oh. and then an infection and an amputation and that sort of stuff. So I didn't yeah. really have anybody like to talk to about that combination. Sure. Um, sure. but, um, just having, you know, being blessed with, uh, a wonderful family, a lot of friends, a great church family. Yeah. And um, then, of course, you know, j just really strengthened my own personal relationship with God. You know, I just bet. that, just um, um, that whole um, surrender. And, yeah. you know, you are, you are God and I am not. And yeah. So following your lead here. That's right. And yeah. faith. Yes, absolutely. Just faith that whatever is going to happen, it's in his hand. Absolutely. One of the things we try to talk about on the podcast, too, is what people can do for you mm -hmm. because you know when people your friends and family find out you get a diagnosis or mm -hmm. you have this infection and you mm -hmm. have a lot of questions before you have answers mm -hmm. a lot of people are texting and calling and they're like what can we do what can we do right and sometimes you're just like i don't even know what you can do but as you look back is there any advice you would give to anyone out there that might have just gotten any kind of a diagnosis that have all mm -hmm. these people saying what can i do what are some things that, that one thing I would say, say is um, willingly and uh, graciously receiving help. Mm -hmm. I'm a person who is really independent mm -hmm. and um, I, it, it was difficult for me at first. But, um, you know, being and, and telling them when they said, what can we do? Yeah. Um, telling them 
specifically what it is that they could do. And sometimes I would just look at them and go, I, I, I don't know, you <laughs> yeah. know, um, source, everybody wanted to bring food and, and, you know, I had to, I was like, look, I live by myself. I'm a widow. <laughs> Don't be bringing a lot of food. Don't be bringing Baptist funeral food to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's always so much I can eat. I'll freeze that for six months. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, they, they would just, some would just come and sit with me. I, I did have two incredibly dear friends who with no medical background, they were the one that changed my bandage every day. They would come Aww. every day to my house yeah. and change it because I couldn't, I couldn't where it was. I couldn't get it close enough yeah. and then be able to see it. And so they did that every day. Oh, that's and, so nice. And it, and, and it was nice because I came to really look forward to their being there. Even yeah. though, as I said, you know, part of me was like um, not really wanting to de de have to depend on someone. I knew I had to depend on someone. And then I looked forward to depending on someone. Yes. And, yeah. uh, and they were there um, not just for the physical uh, tough times, but for the emotional tough times, yeah. whenever it would just get to the point where it was just kind of overwhelming. And yeah. um, w one would look at me and reach out and go, let it out, sister. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so they were there for that. And yeah. I think just knowing that people genuinely wanted to help. And I had yeah. so many people there. They, before I knew it, my friends had a schedule where it was like, people were taking shifts yeah. to be there all night, you oh, know, you know, so and, it, and I was like, Okay. You know, I just kind of let them do that. And, uh, yeah. you know, bringing food, bring the, and I was not alone for like the first week. Oh, uh, there was someone there and, and I appreciated that because well, yeah. having to get up and, you know, just try to I'm walk sure. to the restroom or something. It, it, if, if I needed help, it was yeah. there. But, you know, sometimes being left alone, even with your thoughts, is not healthy. No, no. Because you can go to some pretty dark places. And, and, and yes. it, when you don't feel good, you just had a toe removed. Yeah, you had to pause your chemo. Yes, I mean that's a lot. You lost yeah. your husband. That's a lot where you could just sit there and kind of spiral. Right. And so when you have people around mm -hmm. to tell a joke or to just right. tell you what's going on in their life, or you know, get you out of your headspace. Absolutely. Just, and he, and even though I did try to take it one day at a time, mm -hmm. um, having things to look forward to, yeah. uh, like you know, going back on the mission field was one that I looked forward to. Yeah. Um, going, you know, adding some of those activities in back in that I had to suspend for a while, mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to that. Um, so having that, those things to look forward to was, was also good. E even though I didn't know when they would happen, mm -hmm. I knew that they would. And just hanging on to that gave me hope. Yeah, and it gives you a goal. Yes, and we're like, oh, I got to get up and walk. Exactly. <laughs> and hopelessness is is once you get to that point, yeah. it's really hard to get out of, and that is a very dark place to be. Whenever you have yeah. no hope, Absolutely. and I think that's also where uh, people come in, where you're not left alone with your thoughts, yes. where you have someone who uh, will listen and and empathize when they need to, challenge when they need to. Yeah. Um, that's very helpful. It's very, it's very grounding, you know, grounding in reality. And that, that's good because you can go to some pretty dark places. You can. I have a, one of my best friends, she's really good at saying, okay, have your pity party, <laughs> but then we're done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you know, you need that. You need someone that'll just say, okay, have your moment, mm -hmm. but let's, okay, let's wrap it up here. You I had a friend, like, I would sometimes get into my, I'm like, what if, uh -huh. and she would go, mm-mm not going there. And that's I, a terrible game to play. Yes. Like the, the what if scenario. The what ifs. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. whenever they're the what if, what if I lose more of my foot? What if I, you know, whatever. And yeah. uh, she, no, not going there. We'll that's face right. that. We'll face that whenever it, it it's right up in our face, but we're not going to bring it on right exactly. now. Exactly. So that was very helpful to even have Even if you do the scenarios, there's nothing you can do about it. No, no. So what has this experience maybe have taught you about yourself or about your healthcare journey. Um, have you started chemo again? Yes, I've started back chemo again. So okay. That's where I was this morning. Okay. Um, so I have started that back. And um, uh, Dr. Baltz asked me every time I go how my foot is, you know, okay. and I said, my well, foot is healed. Uh -huh. So because one of the medicines that I take would really interfere with healing. Okay. And I said, foot is healed. Foot is good. Yeah. And so I was able to start back a few weeks ago. Um I think one of the things all of this has taught me is um, just to kind of uh, be patient, mm -hmm. um, be patient with myself, be patient with others, um, uh, look for the, 
look for things in everyday life that you would overlook. You know, it just made me, it's made me kind of really a heightened awareness of what life really means to me now. Yeah. And um, things that I probably would never have noticed, I now notice. And, and things that, you know, that I didn't prioritize before I do now, you know, like um, uh, just being able to, you know, be able to sing with choir at Gyre Springs, which is where I go to church. Um, when Now I'm not, I'm not able to because I can't make rehearsals because I'm too fatigued and how much that meant to me. So whenever I'm able to do it, yeah. it means even more. So just being able to just wring every drop out of life yeah. is what I want to do every day that I'm given is, is a blessing. And I want to try to live it to the fullest. Yeah. Um, sometimes the fullest is just making it from my chair to my bed. Sure. And some, and I, and I allow myself that, yeah. you know, uh, so sometimes that's the fullest and sometimes the fullest is, um, you know, going to on a trip. I'm going with my friend Amsterdam in a couple of days. So yeah, in a couple of days. Yeah, Wednesday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, but you know, being able just to enjoy the life that you're given that day and not try to plan too much or focus too much on something way in the future, but to really enjoy what's going on right now. I think that's beautiful. And I think that you're an example of when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. You make lemonade, you lemon made, bars, exactly. lemon cookies, lemon, lemon cake. <laughs> you make it. Yeah. Homesickle. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, that is phenomenal because that's exactly what we want people who watch the podcast to get out of the podcast is that when they're not alone. Right. Um, right. I think sometimes we all think we're alone mm -hmm. or or. People don't understand how we feel when right. we go through things. Right. There's so many people that understand mm -hmm. uh, what loss means, loss mm -hmm. of a limb or loss of a part of your colon yeah. or, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, loss of control. Yes. That's in your yes. life. Or the illusion of control. And I the think that's, exactly. that's one of the things that I really noticed is it really was an illusion of control. It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't ever in my control. When things are going good, you feel like you're in control. Yeah. But yeah. you're really not. No. No. Um, and the body just does what the body does. The body does what the body does. And, yes. um, but and I, take care of it. Take care of it. Do what you can. Yes. And like you said, if you're a diabetic watching, check your feet every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you don't have sores that aren't healing. If you do, go get it checked get out. Get it checked out immediately. Get it yes. checked out. Yes. And tap into resources like wound care centers uh, that specialize in healing. But also work with your other doctors because, as we learned, you know, if you're going through chemo mm -hmm. or things, they might have to pause it and change your treatment plan. Yes. So yes. that's so important. Yes, it is. Don't ignore yourself. Right. Right. Like but, even now, even though I know my foot is healed and the skin is thickening on it, mm -hmm. I, ch I check that ev every day. Oh, yeah. Um, because I know I'm in chemo and I know ke this, this can interfere with the healing. Yeah. I want to make sure it's not uh dig digressing absolutely you know so i i check that every day absolutely but like we said too even if you're not a diabetic but maybe you have sciatica or you've had spinal surgeries where you might not feel your toes completely mm -hmm. like myself i can't feel three toes check them anyway mm -hmm. because there might be something there so even if you've been walking a long time if you go on a trip just stop at the end of the day check your feet check your toes check your toenails because that's really, really important. You know, when we talk to our cardiologists, they always say the further your limb is from your heart, the mm -hmm. less blood flow it right, gets. Right, so It's easier to get infections mm -hmm. and things in your toes, in your fingers, because they're not as close to your heart where the blood's pumping. So right. always, always, always check your toes, your feet, your fingers, if you don't feel them like you used to. Mm -hmm. We have a lovely story. Thank you. You're a lovely human. Oh, thank you. We hope you have a blast in Amsterdam. I'm planning on it, yes. And, you know. Um, and going back to the Amazon in July. In July? In July, yes. So you're going to Amsterdam. July, you're going back to the Amazon. Yes, yes. You're just phenomenal. Well, no, my God is. As, you know, God is phenomenal. <laughs> my God is phenomenal. Yeah. But God is working through you to touch other people's lives. And thank we you. hope that in the podcast today, that she's done exactly that. Um, hopefully she's giving you hope if you need hope, giving you a little bit of knowledge if you need some knowledge. And until next time, um, we will see you later. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of A View From The Bed, A Patient's Perspective. We hope that you found it helpful. We hope that it helped you make your healthcare decisions. We hope that it made you feel a little more comfortable with your own journey. 
and we hope that you'll join us next time.